So in the next five minutes, we're talking about how you can integrate Slack into NADN. Now, for whatever reason, this has got to be one of the most difficult apps to connect in. For that reason, I wanted to create this video. And specifically, we're talking about, first of all, how you can send messages from Slack into NADN, and then how you can send messages from NADN into Slack. Now, I've created this 15-step guide, which I'll link down below. This will walk you through every single step. So in case you get lost, you can just follow this and it'll tell you exactly what to do. That is, of course, for free. Let's get into this. So the first thing is, and I'll walk you through this to show you how easy this is, we need to create a trigger node and we need to create an action node. Now, I've already gone ahead and done that. We can just drop in, like send a message here and then whatever Slack trigger you want over here. The next thing is, is that we actually need to go over to the uh, website api.slack.com slash apps. Now, you can just literally copy or paste this in your URL up top here. Or if you want to click through NADN to get there, we can open up the trigger node right over here. Okay. We'll go into credentials to connect with, create a credential, open up the docs. Now we're in the documentation that NADN has created, which is super confusing. All we have to do is click create API apps and we will get over to this page here. Now, what we want to do is create an application. We're going to start from scratch over here. We'll give this a name. So I'm going to say super, uh, um, I'm going to say super slack bot or whatever, and then we're going to choose our workspace. Now, keep in mind, you will need to be logged in to Slack in order to access this. So if you haven't done so already, you can create a free Slack account. It should only take a couple seconds here. And then once you've gone ahead and done so, you'll have access to your workspace. We'll create the app and now we're officially inside this portal. So the first thing that we want to do here is go back into our documentation here and we're going to head over to OAuth and permissions, which is on the left hand sidebar here. So we'll click into that and we'll scroll down the page to where it says bot token scopes. We'll add some scopes in here. Now, essentially, I've gone ahead and I've listed all the ones that you need uh, to get started with here. And of course, you can add in as many as you want as your application through NADN grows. But in a nutshell, what this does is it gives NADN the ability to do certain things automatically on your behalf. So for example, chat right there will be able to create messages programmatically through NADN. Or for example, cha uh, channels join will be the ability to join channels or groups read will be private channels, right? Reading private channels and files will be reading files. So it has access to do certain things on your behalf automatically. Once that's up and running, we'll click install to NADN test, which is my um, Slack account here. We'll click allow and then we are good to go. And the next thing here is that we'll get access to our OAuth token here, which is right here. We'll go ahead and copy this and go back into Slack. We can paste in the access token, but in case you're on this screen here, we'll enter into the Slack trigger, uh, create credentials to connect with and we'll enter in that access token and click save. And we're pretty much uh, done the first couple steps here. Unfortunately, it's not that easy. There's a couple more steps that we need to go through. So what we'll do is we'll go back to our particular um, guide here and go to the next step. So next, what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we also have this account connected over here as well in the action. So we're just gonna go ahead and do that. And then we'll go over to the next step, which is to go into the Slack user interface and we're gonna create a new channel. So in Slack, we'll go to channels over here. Okay. And we'll create a channel and we'll just go ahead and call this anything. I'm going to call this test Slack bot test, and we will create this. What a <laughs> original name and we'll skip adding anyone into it. La uh, lastly, what we want to do is just tag the Slack bot that we've created. Okay. And if you just type in the at symbol, you should be able to see it here, but essentially why we're tagging it is because it's going to give us the ability to add this as a new user. So anytime you don't have a user and you tag them in here, Slack will be like, Hey, this person's on the channel. Do you want to add them? And we can confirm this by hitting the three dots, opening the channel details and going into integrations. And now our super Slack bot is now officially in our channel. Now over to the next thing, what I want to do here is I want to make sure that we update the NADN trigger to watch for that new channel that we created here. So what we're doing is we're making sure that from within NADN, we can receive messages from this channel. And we can also send messages to this channel as well. And so from within this trigger, what we're going to do is we're going to select from a list and it's going to be test Slack pod test suite. And we'll also do that for the action over here. And so we'll just choose from a list again, and we're going to choose test Slack bot test. 
Awesome. And just last thing, I'm going to enter in a message here. I'm just going to call it test so that when this workflow starts, we'll receive a message back from Slack. Okay, sweet. So moving on here, we're going to move on to the step number 13, which is going to be copying inside the Slack trigger, the webhook URL. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to copy this. We're going to go back to the API page and go over to event subscriptions, just one below OAuth and permissions. We're going to enable this. And just before we proceed, I want to make sure that we're actually executing this step. So we'll hit this button here and paste in the URL. Now it's going to verify that this URL actually exists, which it does. And then we'll head on to the next step, which is going to be step number 15 here. Now, in a nutshell, what step number 15 is doing is we're saying, hey, how do we want to send messages from Slack into NADEN? And so there's a couple different options that we have here. The options are that we all either send a message when we tag the bot. So for instance, only when I say, hey, super Slack bot, do something for me, right? Then it would essentially start the workflow, or we could trigger this anytime we send a message to a public or a private channel, okay? And so the option is really yours, but essentially I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use the app mention here, okay? And so we'll add a bot user event. I'm gonna add mention here, but if you wanna go ahead and do private groups, you can enter in message.groups, or if you wanna do a public channel, you can go ahead and type in message.channels. Now you'll also need to change the Slack trigger here to bot app mention. So essentially over here, we're gonna make sure that this is bot app mention, or if you wanted to choose one of the other ones, you choose new message posted to a channel, which would be, again, new message posted to a channel. Awesome. So now that that's taken care of, we'll just make sure to save this down here and we can give this a shot. So let's test this workflow out and I'm going to send a message. So I'm going to say test, which will execute this workflow to the AI agent, send it back to Slack. We can see our message here. And the last thing that we need to do is once we've gone ahead, tested this, we're happy with it. We can set this to active. We'll go back into the trigger and we'll go to the webhook URL and change this to a production URL. We'll copy this, head back into the events and subscription, and literally just copy steps 14 and 15 one more time, but this time with the production URL. So we'll change this, we'll enter in that production URL, and we'll click save down here, and now it should work automatically. So I'll go ahead and try the same thing out, send test. Without actually testing the workflow, this will send a response back to me. So that's essentially it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found value in it. If you did, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks and bye-bye.